prehensile tail, it's like a story that will grab you, T-A-L-E. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I migrated that to the web, prehensile tails, and I would tell a funny story every Monday. And there were, there were kind of my personal version of Gonzo stuff. Something crazy that happened to me, something crazy that happened to me. Funny, funny stories, funny stories. And I started to tell stories that were a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more showing a little bit of skin, a little bit of my heart, a little bit of openness. And every time I did that, I thought I'd be kind of, I got a little scared, and I would be flooded with love, flooded with approval, flooded with me too. And this thing that I thought would make me weaker as I expose all these faults of mine made me powerful. As, as suddenly I realized these things that, that, that I used to be so afraid of had no power once I shined a light on them. I used to be so deathly afraid that people would find out that I went to a dance lawn and wore, wore makeup because of my complexion. And then once I said, uh, oh yes, I also I wear this makeup. And then someone said, dude, you wear makeup. I'm like, I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> so this process of slowly doing the striptease with the web put me in a situation where like, what do you got? Like, I, the rocks are all gone. You can't throw anything at me anymore. I've taken it all away. And so something happened where people started to be more interested in the stories that I was like telling just about myself and my personal path and my quest to try to love myself more, more than they were about the funny stuff. So I started talking more about myself, more about myself, more about myself. So I started a new site called cockybastard.com. <laughs> the, the idea was that it was about self-love, and that you have to learn to love yourself before you can love someone else. But if you say that you love yourself, people call you a copy bastard. Mm -hmm. And there was a time, I actually, in, I won a Webby Award for best personal site for this, for this, this project. Which means that at one point in the entire world, I was the most narcissistic person in the entire world. Look at me! Look at me! And um, I kind of, kind of got a little too into it, perhaps. Uh, the opportunity came up, and I moved into a webcam house. So there were 24 cameras, 24/7. Every bedroom, every shower, everything was video and audio. And people always say, like, oh my god, people have to watch you shower. It's like, it's not that big a deal, you know? The hard part is the parts of yourself that you maybe didn't know about yourself. Like, when you get frustrated and you start acting out, or you say, the big one for me was gossiping. Because if anybody, anybody's watching at any time, you can't say anything that you wouldn't say to somebody's face. <laughs> Try that. Try to never say anything out loud that you wouldn't say to another person's face. So when I first moved in, I was like, okay, everyone's watching. I'm going to enunciate, and I'm going to uh, carry around a book that I think people might be looking good at. After 24 hours, I was like, <laughs> and you just can't act 24 7. At some point, you just gotta surrender. So I went through this like intense, rapid psychotherapy where I'm like, am I at peace with who I am in the world? Like, you could take a piece of it, you could take a clip, and you're gonna catch me picking my nose, you're gonna catch me washing something awkward, but if you took me in a 24 hour period, am I at peace with who I am in the world? And anything I'm not, I got fixed fast because it's being archived. <laughs>
and at a set time, everyone gets on at the same time, hugs themselves, and just sinks in with the idea that no matter what you hear on the news, the world would rather hug you than hurt you. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever traveled, you go to some country, no matter what you hear in the, in the headlines, the people will invite you to their home, they will serve you tea, they will do what a family, what a brother, what a us. And that project kind of stumbled along, stumbled along. Didn't get that much attention, so I started something else with the same kind of uh, functional element to try to show people how you could use the net to feel something. It was called Global Gasm. <laughs> yeah, people else either masturbate or have sex in front of their webcams all over the world at the same time. <laughs> Come together to heal the planet. <laughs> But what got Hug Nation really going was when I got my grandpa involved. So my grandpa's this amazing 94-year-old Baptist minister. Actually, by the end of his life, he called himself a Baptist Buddhist. Yes. that guy. And I tell the story all the time, I'm told now as well. Uh, I went to go see him after my grandpa passed. And he was a ministry helped thousand people go through transition, but this was his partner of 65 years and his driver because he kind of had this feeling that God would help him get through intersections, and the DMV is very clear that that's not acceptable. <laughs> and so I went to go see him, like, hey, Grandpa, how's it going? And he said, did you know that for $4 I could get a shuttle anywhere in the city? <laughs> it's like, I know, it's just so I, uh, I took this shuttle down to the market and I uh, had a list of things and I went to the woman behind the counter. I said, excuse me, uh, my wife has recently changed her residence to heaven. Could you help me find a few things? <laughs> I was like, man, Grandpa, you always let me see the glass is half full. And he leaned back and he looked me in the eyes and he said, it's a beautiful glass. Mm. And I was like, boom. <laughs> This is why I've been learning how to use the internet and all these tools so that I can give the microphone. It's possible, man. <laughs> <laughs> so for the next three years, he was my co-host for Hug Nation. And I would go to his retirement village, fire up the webcam, interview him, and then we'd do Hug Nation together. And after very quickly being up, he had great stories, like about when he worked with Martin Luther King Jr. and doing all these cool things, but it wasn't the words that he was saying that was really critical. It was this vibe of gratitude. It was mm. its presence. Mm. It wasn't the telling, it was the showing. Mm. And the net has the ability to do that. Technology has the ability to do that. Mm. And so when he actually started to get sicker, we kept broadcasting from the hospital and got to share his dying process. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, the, one of the things that I'm most proud of anything else, that I got to share the dying process of a man who was greeting death with wonder. A man who lived his life according to his values and had no financial wealth at total peace and just was like, oh, who knows what's going to happen next? <laughs> <laughs> and so the web gave this man who, by society, would have been kind of like, he was in a retirement village, you know? It was kind of like, you know, do your little exercises um, for the rest of your days. Uh, and it's like, he got to actually transfer this massive amount of wisdom mm. uh, through the web. Um, mm. When he died, I wasn't sure if I should keep going because uh, I'm kind of flawed. And so, but I did, and that has been a big part of what I do and share online is the journey and the dirt and the stumbles. As I said, when you let it all out and you're radically transparent, even though you show this weakness, you still can't get hurt. Um, so, like, did anyone here see the uh, Where Are the Men? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Showing? 
I thought it was beautiful and powerful. And, and one of the things that it really hit me was that having role models to show vulnerability is incredibly important. This week I was broadcasting on Facebook Live and talking about some struggles, and midway through I just started bawling, crying. And I was like, I'm, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to archive this. And I was like, of course I have to archive this. We're not here just to share awesome inspirational quotes and truths. We're here to share the journey. We're here to share um, this moment. And I think what I've learned over the last 20 years of sharing this, the most the most powerful feedback, the most emails I get, they go, oh my God, this changed my life, was when I didn't have a powerful message of inspiration, when I said, I'm, I stumbled too, I'm, I'm in the middle of something rough. Well, help me, walk with me as I kind of get out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, if I have anything to, to challenge <laughs> all of us, is that it is awesome that we have so many coaches we also need role models that show that you're not always going to succeed. You're not always going to win. You're not always going to have everything go perfect. And maybe I'm not manifesting all perfection, but it irks me when it becomes so taboo mm -hmm. to share your darkness. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage everyone to share a little bit of their Not in the wine, 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 but in the, oh, wow, I'm a, I'm a warrior. And right now, I am battling some demons. I am battling some struggles. I'm battling some doubt. You will find you are far more powerful when you admit and welcome that part of your journey. In addition to sharing the dirt, I think we need to share the exceptional light. Um, six years ago, came back from Burning Man, and, well, been going for 18 years, but this was, we came back and said, how can I do uh, gifting in the world and started a went downtown with a Christian friend of mine who started giving things out to the homeless. And he was like, let's not tell anybody about this. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I want to tell everybody about this. <laughs> and there is a odd, you know, it's we we're discouraged from talking about acts of charity, acts of goodness. It's supposed to be like more honorable to do it quietly. Mm. But then you have you don't have examples of people that are living lives like that. When I heard that you hear Prince how much charity he yeah. did during his life, mm -hmm. I was like, "Fuck you, dude! Why didn't you let us know so all these kids did <laughs> had a role model that they could look up to it and also add all this goodness in their life?" I didn't say I didn't do that, man. Actually, I was just more like, "Oh, bummer." <laughs> <laughs> We do it every first Saturday. We get 50, 100 volunteers, each one coming in and having an experience where they feel, learn how good it is to feel good. Um, I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to uh, also acknowledge one of the most powerful examples of sharing the journey and sharing. Um, uh, Decoupling of Eli mm. <laughs> and Betsy was, I think, so inspiring. If you have, I don't know if it's still online. I don't know if I should have even not mentioned that, but it it was an example of opening your their heart of, in, in a place that we often encourage people to either put on a happy face and say it had a script or not talk about it, or fight, or whatever, but they shared this truth in a way that inspired people to act. Too often, I think, we tell people what they should do. Like people, God, Facebook has been crazy when people sit and go, you need to do this, oh man, animal chill. Like, don't tell me what to do. Do something awesome and inspire me to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you fail along the way, share that too. So, Look forward to seeing the awesome things you guys are doing. Yeah. Thanks for letting me see.
I just want to remind you all that you all have an opportunity to stand here and share something. Something that you think might make a positive impact on the world. Something that might inspire you that you think could make a ripple in the world. Here we are evolving and growing and changing and expanding and shifting so fast. Like Katie was speaking about, you know, the, the history shows and it is projecting to go much faster. And we all feel it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd love to just do a quick um, grounding and closing. So if you wouldn't mind, mm -hmm. we can just uh, close our eyes for just a minute or so here. Beginning of the night, we opened ourselves to receive. So again, I'm gonna invite you to just 